Ultimo here. It is Tuesday, June 22nd, about 8 p.m. I'm still here in the canyon campsite. Yesterday I um, explored the canyon, uh, Yellowstone Canyon area. I uh, took a hike on the Chittenden Trail as well as Uncle Tom's Trail. And then an inspiration point, I think it was called Red Something Trail, that was basically 300 feet down in about half a mile. Easy going down, not so much coming up. I saw a lot of people uh, complaining and groaning and moaning, especially little kids. But when you got down that spectacular site, I think I posted something on YouTube, maybe even, maybe even on Facebook. But uh, just the upper and lower falls of the canyon are just absolutely amazing, really beautiful. Um, and some really cool stuff. Um, and of course, I still got, oh, uh oh, -huh, uh -huh, yeah, yeah. Crazy Elvis still here. Then also, uh, Hello, my American stooge, I mean friends. It's a difficult word. In Russian, stooge and friend means close, same thing. So Vlad is still here. Uh, we also picked up a new trailer today. Ah. Ah, my name is T-Rex. T-Rex? Yeah, well, there's a lot of fossils around here and uh, one of them. T-Rex, you sound a whole lot like Foster Brooks. Who's Foster Brooks? He's an old school actor who's played like he was drunk all the time. I'm not drunk. I just don't talk good. Okay, well, whatever. Anyway, T-Rex is here and he's joined us along now, so I have three companions with me. Uh, so T-Rex, what do you want us to know? I just gotta tell you, that whole evolution thing, that's total bulk. Uh, whoa, whoa, T-Rex, this is a family show. You can't say words like that. Oh, it's just the best, biggest hoax ever. I know, because I was there. Evolution is a hoax? Yeah, well, so, well what happened to you? Part of me just becoming extinct. Don't you have other extinct animals now? Well, yeah, but uh, I don't know. I grew up in Clear Lake where it was Science City and grew up in a really good school and education system thanks to the sacrifices of my parents. And they were all about evolution. Even when I went to college, they talked a lot about evolution. So I've been learning evolution my whole life, and you're telling me that's a hoax now? Yeah, that's a total hoax. What do you mean it's a hoax? Come on. They never found Missing Link. There's all kinds of other things I could point out to you too. So for example, what about science today has already denounced evolution, that it's not right. So that's one good thing you could do, but you could also point out that like Darwin, his idea was a theory, but it was his only idea because theory has some criteria and requirements and Darwin didn't even make those. Well, that's a good point too. Then on the other hand, look at the order of the ecosystem. I mean, look how perfect it is. And even uh, Stephen Hawking decided that there was some kind of intelligent design behind this whole thing. So there has to be something more. This evolution thing is just absolute bull. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I told you already, no, none of that language. It's okay in Texas, but it's not okay here. So why don't you like give us examples of how the ecosystem works perfectly if people just don't, they well, don't use that word. Leave it alone. So yeah, T-Rex brings up a few good points. By the way, I'm totally into evolution because I'm evidence of superior being. I'm top of everything. Obviously evolution is a good thing. Vlad is king of evolution. Not me, man. I believe in Jesus Christ and I know he created the world. So that's what's right. Well, I don't know, he created mosquitoes for some reason, and I don't get that whole thing, just like fire ants and all the others. Nonetheless, talking about this ecosystem that I've been able to explore and, and enjoy, there's a couple of things I've learned along the way that challenge the whole di idea of billions and billions of years old and evolution and that whole nonsense. Um, one of them is that this ecosystem I'm in right here works perfectly of its own. It replenishes itself, it renews itself, it just continues to work fine if man doesn't interfere with it and man doesn't introduce some um, stupid ideas to it. So I'll give you one example. So I don't know if you can see trees up in the back, back in my canopy there. But anyway, 90% of the trees here are pole pine trees. They live to be about 200 years old, but they have very shallow roots. So it doesn't take much to blow them over. But what you can see is, I'll see if I can show you here real quick. They're very densely populated. And the purpose of that dense population is when the wind blows, it doesn't get strong enough to blow them over because it easily could. 
But anyway, after 200 years, these things live on the average. And what happens is about 200 years, they start to rot and decay. So they need renewal. The interesting thing about these trees is they drop pine cones like most trees do. Can you see those pine cones down there? And the pine cones that are dropped, they have a seed in the middle. And that one seed in the middle can be a tree in the future. However, the deal is that these particular pine trees have a really waxy substance on them around the pine cone, and they don't release the seed unless there's an extreme heat exposure. And the extreme heat has to be like a fire heat. So in other words, when mother nature comes through and strikes the ground with lightning and a fire starts, that's what causes the release of these pine seeds that create these new trees. <laughs> no. I'm not suggesting to you in any way that man starting fires is a good thing or even reasonable or even responsible. It's actually irresponsible. But the point is this system would work on its own. It would be completely renewing, completely good, completely self-sufficient without man's interference. There's been a couple of times even in the history of this park that man has come in and started fires intentionally for this renewal thing, knowing about the whole pine cone deal. And it created a real mess because then the fire got out of control and it just went out of the Yellowstone Park and actually burned down 140,000 acres outside of Yellowstone Park. So when man tries to monkey with this perfect ecosystem, it never works out. Another great example is that when this park was first discovered by, um, I think the guy's name was John Colton. He was part of Lewis and Clark's uh, party. And Lewis and Clark had been told about this area, but their um, commission by Thomas Jefferson was to explore the North Pacific area and the West and how far fe how far West we went, and et cetera. Um, John Colton, he veered off of the Lewis and Clark expedition and came into this park, and he was the first guy who found it. And subsequently, there were some other folks who followed after him, and uh, then there was this development thing that went on that wasn't originally a national park. It didn't become a national park until Theodore Roosevelt made it our country's first national park. Prior to that, man did his thing and was using the resources to capitalize on and make money, uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing if man is responsible, but man tends not to be responsible. And in the process of being here, trying to do cattle and what have you, there were wolves. And man decided, well, you know what? We need to get rid of the wolves because they're eating our cows and they're bothering with our families and what have you. So basically just eradicated all the wolves and wolves became extinct in this park. When that happened, the elk growth went off the charts. There was no natural predator to stop the elk growth and they just kept growing like crazy. And, uh, one of the things that elks like to do is their, one of their favorite foods is lily pads that they find along these rivers. Those lily pads happen to be the uh, favorite winter preserves of beavers. Beavers take those lily pads, they take them into their dens and they save them for the winter time, they eat them. So when the elk were going crazy eating all the lily pads, they drove away, they diminished the beaver population. So somewhere along the way, man figures this out, so we need to reintroduce wolves and they did that brought a, back a better balance of the original elk population. is still out of control, but not as bad. And by the way, the beaver population came back. And the point is that when man starts monkeying with this perfect, perfect order, this perfect creation, all we do is we disrupt and interfere. If we leave it alone, it works pretty good on its own. Now the point of na this national park is that you can come in here and enjoy this thing. You can enjoy this beautiful park. Don't pollute it. Don't be disruptive. Don't be disturbance to the community. Don't be disturbance to the natural order. You know, leave the animals alone. This is their place, whether it's a buffalo or an elk or a moose or a bear. It's great to see those things. And we're, Roosevelt's idea was that we should come here and enjoy this stuff, but not be disruptive or disturbance to it. Unfortunately, that's kind of what we tend to do. Um, another great example of man's fouling up of the ecosystem is that here, Lake Yellowstone is this ginormous lake. I, I forget how many miles it is. It is a really big lake. But what it's known for is cutthroat trout. They are really fun trout to fish and, and a great trout to eat. And people started coming here and, and were fishing the heck out of cutthroat trout. <coughs> and the next thing you know, they said, well, you know, if that's pretty good, what we need to do is introduce lake trout. That'll make the fishing even better. And so they introduced lake trout. Well. That created a problem in 1980. Someone caught the first lake trout. The problem with lake trout is that their favorite food is cutthroat trout larvae. So basically they just demolished the cutthroat trout population 
by this man introduced idea if we you know if cutthroat are great let's introduce more fish fishing will be even that much better so now we're having to spend millions and billions of dollars trying to figure out how to get rid of the lake trout uh, they have a kind of a dredging system they're trying to use but it costs a fortune and it's ineffective and so we've really fouled this thing up there's still cut trout but not as many and some people say well why don't we just cook why don't we just fish the lake trout then the problem with lake trout is they're deep water fish therefore you can't catch them easily therefore they populate well and then they further decimate the cutthroat trout anyhow hopefully you get my point that this ecosystem has an order and it's perfect on its own as long as we don't mess with it so if you're going to visit a national park or a state park or even the local parks in your area don't be a disturbance you know if there's this trail stay on the trail if there's trash pick it up don't leave trash you know, do what you can. Be a good steward of this incredible resource we have. And that kind of brings us to the T-Rex thing and the evolution deal, is that now we have this evolution which is leading our, our thinking and our way of doing things. And so things like uh, uh, an unfortunate truth and climate change and, and uh, global warming and whatever the other next machination is of this whole thing, of man's going to fix the problem. You know, the problem is that, you know, we can take every measure we want in this country, but other places like China and India and Indonesia, they don't have this vast amount of resources and wealth that we have where they can spend billions of dollars trying to correct a problem. So they're just gonna keep, keep on keeping on. They're not gonna change. Um, I'm not saying we shouldn't be good stewards, we should. I, that's what I'm saying from the beginning, that we come to this park, don't be a disturbance, don't be a disruption. You know, be a good steward and enjoy this thing. It should be the same thing at home. We should be good stewards of what we have. And if people will be good stewards, then things will be different. Now, one of the things that can happen here is there's two ways that can work. Is that one, the government can come in and tell you, hey, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to live. And let me take your money and decide how it's gonna spend on making things right. The other way is you be responsible for yourself, whether it's at home, whether it's in the forest, wherever you're at, whether it's at the beach, um, just going to work, you can be responsible for yourself. And I think the problem is that most people say, well, it doesn't do any good if I'm responsible for myself because all the other yahoos aren't. That's kind of the point. Be responsible for yourself. Do what's right because it's the right thing to do, regardless of what other people are doing. That's kind of my thought on the deal. So I'm really conscientious as I go around here to stay on the trails. I make sure that uh, I observe the signs. You know, I've taken a few video of buffalo, but I'm not you know, antagonizing them or trying to get close to them. I mean, there's some guidelines here in the park to stay 100 yards away from any big animal. I, you know, if you ask me from a buffalo, that's nothing. They run 30 miles an hour if they want to. Same thing with the elk and the big horns and a grizzly bear. I don't even want to know. I kind of like to see a grizzly bear, but I want to see it from at least 100 yards away. <laughs> and not get any closer than that. I'm thinking a grizzly bear looks at me and thinks that's a, at least a one-day meal, if not more. Anyhow, you get my point. Be a good steward. Don't be a weapon of a government that says this is the way you're supposed to do it and this is the way you need to do it. We have evidence from... I don't know, the beginning of this country, that every time the government tries to step in and correct the ecosystem or do what's right, it just monkeys it up and makes it worse. And the same thing would be with this, you know, green agenda that we have going on in this country. You know, it just, it just makes it worse. Um, of course, you can, that's my opinion, and I'm a dinosaur anyway, and most people think that. Nonetheless, this is Ultimo and Ultimo. Oh, sorry, sorry. Amen. Take care of the environment. Do like me, Vlad. Capitalize every money you can. Every dollar. Oh, a Russian dollar too. Rupee. Whatever it takes. Just capitalize every dollar you have. That's what it's all about. Or you can end up like me if you're a bad steward. You won't be around for very long. Ultimo, out.